Okay, exercise 1A, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. We're now going to be looking at something that does feel a little bit more further mathsy, um, but not not really, not yet. But we're going to just go into the stuff that feels a little bit newer. So we've got this Euclidean algorithm. And before we do that, quickly pause the video. There is our GCSE recap here. I want you to find the GCD of these things. Now, GCD, remember, that is our new posh way of saying highest common factor. It is the greatest common divisor. So see if you get the same things as me, but pretty easy for this stuff. So we're going to do the greatest common divisor of 3 and 12. Well, 3 divides 3 and 3 also divides 12. So the greatest common divisor is 3 that we've got there. Now, the greatest common divisor of 25 and 25, well, 25 divides them both. So their highest common factor is 25 in that case, a really easy one. Now, these ones we need to be a little bit more careful about. So I don't know if you know this button on your calculator. You can press shift and then the fact button. So I'm going to do that on my calculator right now to put it into its prime factor decrease composition I'll press 90 equals and then shift and then fact I think on the calculator I have it here you see this button that I'm pressing it, it says fact above it so you press 90 equals shift oh let me do this again sorry 90 equals shift and fact and it should break it down into its prime factors so it's 2 times 3 squared times 5 and then 84 84 is going to be, I'll just do it on my other calculator because it's quicker for me, is 2 squared times 3 times 7. So the only thing that they've both got in common is a single 2 and a single 3 that we've got there. So it is just a 2 times 3 because they both have a 2, they both have a 3, everything else they don't have in common. Now, these are fine, right? Pretty easy with these kinds of numbers. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to use the Euclidean algorithm as a quick method to find the GCD of any two integers. And it has many more uses beyond this later in the chapter. So you might think to yourself, actually, I just prefer doing the GCSE thing. I'm just going to stick doing that. Well, that's not going to cut it because you need the Euclidean algorithm to be able to do some of the more challenging things that come up later on. And questions will often ask for the Euclidean algorithm to be used. So they're looking for that evidence as you go. Now it uses repeated applications of the division algorithm. And this is the Euclidean algorithm that we have here. And I promise you this looks way more challenging than it is. In fact, you might like to just do these examples and then return to this and kind of see what it's talking about. So I'm briefly going to read through this, but I think you're going to be more convinced by watching me do um, some examples. It'll just It's quite intuitive when you see what's happening. So it says here, start by applying the division algorithm to A and B so that A equals Q1B plus R1 that we have here. Then what you do is you apply the division algorithm to B and R1. OK, so you apply the division algorithm to those two things. So it was previously with A and B and now it's shifted. So it's with B and R1. Then what you do is you get this new equation here and you divide the division, you apply the division algorithm to R1 and R2. So those last two terms that we've got here to so R1 and R2. And you just keep doing this and doing this and you continue, continue until you um, have a zero remainder. I'll change this on the PDF. And the last non-zero remainder is the greatest common divisor of A and B. Now, I'm not going to prove this here because it's quite like a long proof and it doesn't add much to the understanding of this. But just the key thing that you'll notice is we had the B and the B that were the same. Then we had the R1 and the R1 that were the same. So kind of like each time it's shifting and pulling in the new remainder to do the division algorithm on. Like I said, this is going to make so much more sense when you see it as an example. Now, it does work doing it either way around, but commonly people will always put the bigger one first. So we will start off with this one, applying the division algorithm to 657. So we're thinking of 657 essentially divided by 306. So 657, if you divide it by 306, you get two point something, which means it's two lots of 306. So two times 306, that's 612. 657 take away that is 45. So there is my B, which is the, the, the B I had from before, the 306. And there's that remainder 45. So I'm now going to do the division algorithm for this part. I'm going to say that 306 is equal to some lots of 45 plus a remainder. So it's almost like the 306 is shifting over and the 45 is shifting over. So we now get 306 is equal to, let's do 306, let's divide it by 45, it's 6.8. So there are six lots of 45, and then the remainder, 6 times 45 is 270. So I'll do 306, take away 270, the remainder 
is 36. Now that 45 is going to come over here and the 36 is going to come over like this. So there's going to be the 45. Well, 45 is just one lot of 36. And yes, I'm doing this on my calculator. The remainder is going to be 9. Now, you don't need to do these arrows every time. This is just for my demonstration. So the 36 is going to jump over here, and we're just going to say that it is four lots of nine. Okay, so the nine has shifted over, and we've got a zero remainder. So this was it. You continue until you have a zero remainder. The last non-zero remainder is the GCD of A and B. So this that we have right here, this is the last non-zero remainder. Last non zero remainder, which means that using that information that we have, we can now say that the GCD of 306 and 657 is equal to 9. Now I'm going to just quickly show that to you with the GCSE version. If I use the GCSE thing and I do the shift fact on 306, it is 2 times 3 squared times 17. If I do it on 6 times 57, Six, not six times 57, 657. 657 is 3 squared times 73. And very clearly, we can see that the only factor they have in common is that 3 squared. So we know that it is correct for that part. But you do need to know how to do this Euclidean algorithm. So I want you to do it for some much bigger numbers now, because this is probably where the Euclidean algorithm kind of comes into play a little bit better. I want you to find the GCD, the greatest common divisor of these. So pause the video and have a go. And then you can see if you've got the same thing as me. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my 14,994 and 3,080 and see what the different, uh, see how many times it goes in. So it's 14,994 divided by 3,080. So that's four lots of it. Okay, so it's 14,994 minus four lots of 3,080. So the remainder is 2,674. So we're now going to have 3,080, and we're going to see that 2674 shifts across. Well, obviously, it's just going to be one lot of that. So I can just say the remainder is 3,080, take away 2674, which is 406. So we then get the 2674. We'll find out how many lots of 406 this is, and then come up with the radi uh, uh, remainder. I was going to call it the radius. 2674 two, divided by 406. Well, it is six point something. So it's six lots of 406. Six lots of 406. 2674 minus that answer. The remainder is 238. So we put the 406. That's clearly just one lot of 238. So I'll see what the remainder is by doing 406, take away 238, and it's 168. So 238, well, that's going to be clearly one lot of 168. So I'll do 238, take away 168, the remainder is 70. So 168, okay, that's going to be two lots of 70, which is 140. I don't need the calculator for this because there's going to be an extra 28. And then I'm going to say that 70 is equal to two lots of 28. I'm going freestyle now because two lots of 28 is 56. And that gives us a remainder of 14. And then we get that 28 is just equal to two lots of 14 plus zero, which means this is our GCD. This is our GCD. So our GCD of 3080 and 14,994 is equal to 14. Do you see how this thing that we've got written here is more confusing than just watching me do an example and kind of going through it? So I really encourage you to practice a lot of these examples because once you've done a few of them, they'll feel very repetitive and you'll just know that you're going to get all of them right. Okay, so just be very, very careful with calculators as well. that you're not making any um, switching numbers around and stuff like that because it can be easy to make an error. Next video, we are going to do reversing the Euclidean algorithm. And this is where it goes beyond just finding the GCD. It actually allows us to do some more interesting kinds of things that will have some purpose later on in the chapter.